Hey gang, we're back. We're doing another problem. I've got a challenge problem for you this over in internal forces. This challenge problem is kind of kind of a little bit tricky, okay? So we've got a, a frame here with a lot of pulleys and cables and they ask us to find find the internal force on the beam at point F, okay? Which is right there, okay? And they give us the radius of the pulleys is 0.6 feet. So how do you do this problem? Well, like any other problem, we're going to start off with find global equilibrium, okay? So find global equilibrium. Can we do it? Okay, so what do we have here? First thing, you know, we're, let's, let's get rid, let's free up this body. And I'm going to think of this thing as one big rigid body, okay? Don't think of it as pieces right now. Not until we take it apart. So I'm just going to get rid of uh, the wall. I'm going to get rid of the wall, okay? So I'm freeing this up from the world. I would have had to cut through pulley uh, the uh, connection at A, and i got to cut through this connection up here at B, okay? So now those are gone. You can't see them. They are not there, okay? So what's going on there? Well, here's what's going on. I would have this. Here's the rope pulling on the system. And what do we know about the rope going over a pulley? If it's 90 there... It's 90 there, it's 90 there, and it's 90 over here as well, okay? What else do we have as far as reaction forces go? Well, over here at A, um, let's see. I am going to have something like this. There's going to be an AX. And then up here, I think it's pulling this off of the wall. So up here, I think I would have this, a BX. And then, I don't know, these ropes are kind of pulling this whole system together. So I think these guys have to go apart to kind of keep that from collapsing, right? And that's just what I have in my head. Do, is that right? Eh, I think it's right. How will I know? Well, I'll tell you how I'll know is when I solve for AY and BY, if I get a negative, then I got it backwards, right? I don't think it is, but maybe, okay? So, can I find global? I have three equations, some of the force X, some of the force Y, and some of the moments. If I take the moment here, well, I'm not going to be able to, I got one, two, three, four unknowns, but I only got three equations, so I can't find global. But I might be able to find a little bit of global, okay? So if I take the moment at A, right, BY, ch -ch 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 whammo, gets knocked out, doesn't he? He's a cha-cha force. So the only, I am going to find BX. Let's do that. That'll, at least that'll be something. Okay, so sum of the moments, point A equals zero equals what do I have? Uh, I got BX, which is rotating me positive. So BX times how far away? 5.4. Okay, I've got the 90, which is below A. So that's going to rotate me. Oh, that's negative, isn't it? So minus 90 times the radius of the pulley. That's how far away it is. So it's 0.6. Okay. And then I've got this 90 over here, which is rotating me. Oh, that's also negative. So minus 90 times, oh, how far is that? 1.8, 4.8, 6.8, 7.2, plus another radius, 7.8. All right. So let's put that in our calculator and let's see what BX is equal to. Here we go. Um, it is equal to 90 times 0.6 plus 90 times 7.8. That's 756, and then divide that by 5.4, and BX is equal to 140. Okay, so now I know this guy up here. Do I know AX? Well, some of the force in the X, right? So this guy goes to the left, this guy goes to the left, AX goes to the right, so he's going to equal 140 plus 90, which is 230. Okay? So I found a little bit of global. I didn't find the whole thing, but I found a little bit. Maybe just enough to get the job done. Now, here's what I'm thinking, okay? I'm going to find M, N, and V at point F. So what am I going to do? I'm going to need to cut through point F. 
I really think it's going to be easy if I draw this left side, right? I'm also going to have to cut through this to kind of free myself up, right? But that's the plan. Now, when I cut through that, right, because every time you cut a beam, you must have an M and V, right? So I'm going to have three unknowns, M, N, and V. So having three unknowns, that's going to consume all of my equations. So I need to know everything over here. So how do I find AX and AY? I'll tell you how you do that. This is a frame problem. We got to do what? What's step two in frame problems? Take it apart, okay? So I'm going to draw this kind of whole bottom beam here, okay? And that bottom beam looks like this. On this end over here, I have a Y and I have 230. And then right here is where that pulley is. What's going on at the pulley? I've got, well, I've got 90 going this way. But I also have 90 going that way as well. And then what's going on at point E? Point E is probably the most confusing point on the whole thing. So do I leave the pulley on here or do I take it away? I always tell my students to leave it on here, except for in this case. Because when I take it apart, does the pulley go with this free body or does the pulley go with that free body? Um, I don't know, okay? So here's what you do. I mean, think about, it. even if I left that pulley on there, okay, if I left the pulley on there, it's got a force here and a force there, right? 90 and 90, okay? This one rotates me clockwise and is how far away? 0.6. This one rotates me counterclockwise and is how far away? 0.6. So it doesn't matter because these two guys here would cancel each other out anyway. They would make no moment, okay, no moment. So what you got to think about is, as those ropes are pulling, what they're doing is exerting a force on that pin that goes through point E, okay? And this one is going to have an opposite effect on, on the force at point E than this one does. So here's point E, right? And let's say, what is he feeling? He feels, um, let's just say he feels a, a downward force. Uh-oh, sorry. A downward force. That would be... Um, EY, okay, this was EY, and let's say he feels this, EX. Do I have to be super concerned about that? You know what? What I'll do is I'll take a moment there and I'll just knock all that out anyway, and then I won't have to worry about it. Because if I take a moment at E, what am I going to find? That thing that I want over there at point A, okay? So let's do that. Let's take the moment here at point E. And let's see if we can find that missing piece of the puzzle over there at A. We need A, Y. We need that guy. Okay, so what do I have? I have this 90, which rotates me. That's negative. Minus 90 times how far from E? It's 2.4 plus 3 is 5.4, but then back up 0. 0.6, which is 4.8. Okay. How about this 90? He's below point E, so he's going to rotate me also clockwise, so negative, minus 90 times 0. 0.6, okay? And then the 230, he's a cha-cha force, right? Goes all the way through point E, so he's gone. And then AY rotates me, let's see, ooh, that's counterclockwise, positive. So plus AY times, how far is that from E? That is... Um, 4.8, 4.8, right, plus 2.4 is uh, 6 point, 7.2, isn't it? 7.2. Okay, so from that, I should be able to get a Y. Okay, here we go. So on clear, 90 times 4.8, 4.8, plus 90 times 0.6, equals, divided by 7.2, is 67.5. So AY is equal to 67.5 pounds. And guess what? I got a positive number, so that means that my, my guess for the direction was correct. 67.5 pounds, okay? So you're 67.5. 
And what? Up stuff has to equal the down stuff. I've got that guy down, and that guy down, and that guy's going up. So that guy has to be equal to 157.5 pounds. Now, I don't need that. I don't need, it didn't ask me for that. Maybe when you do this problem for a test or something, it says, hey, what's the reactions at B? Well, now I got it, right? But I don't need it for finding what's going on at point F, okay? So let's go back to this free body and let's cut through point F. Here's point F right there, okay? So I'm gonna get rid of this side of the beam, okay? So I'm gonna only leave that side. The reason I get rid of that side over there because it, it kind of confused me and I don't know what's going on over there. So I'm going to just leave it alone, right? So here we go. Every time you cut the beam, you must have what? An N, okay? A V, I drew the left side. You don't want to get left at Walmart or you feel down, right? And then the moment, whoop, goes this way. All right, and there you go. There's my positive sign convention at point F. Now I just got a little old regular statics problem to solve that, right? I got three things to do, three things to do, and that is the force in the X, the force in the Y, and the moment about a point, right? That's all I got left to do. So let's see what we get here. Okay, so some of the forces in the X what do I have in the x direction? I have NF, okay, and I have a minus 90, and I have a plus 230. Uh, that's it, isn't it? So I'll move this stuff to the other side. 90 minus 230 is equal to negative 140. So what does that mean? Instead of this bar actually being in tension here because this NF is pulling away, that part of the bar is actually in compression, okay? So that's okay. According to the positive sign convention, NF, it should be equal to a negative number, okay? And just leave it just like that. So the next one, some of the force in the Y, that's gonna give me my V, isn't it? So in the Y direction, I have 90 going uphill, and then minus 67.5, Anybody else going, oh, there's a VF minus, okay? Move the V to the other side, VF equals 22.5 pounds, okay? And that's positive, which means the assumption here that V is going down is correct. All right, one more step, and that's let's find this M here, okay? Sum of the moments at point F is equal to zero equals... Remember, when you take a moment here at a point, you never knock out moments, okay? And I drew him going positive, so I'll just put him in there like that, okay? Let's see, the 90 here, this guy is rotating me. Oh, that's negative, so minus 90 times how far away from F? That guy is 3 minus 0. 0.6. How about 2.4? Okay? Then I've got this minus, then I got this 90 down here, which also rotates me below the point. He rotates me clockwise, so minus 90 times 0. 0.6. And then the 230 of cha-cha force, whoop, and then the 67.5 rotates me positive. So plus 67.5 times, ooh, how far away is that? Well, that's uh, 3 plus 1.8, how about 4.8? Okay, so all we got to do, solve that. So the moment at point F is equal to, here we go, 90 times 2.4. Oh, not 990. 90 times 2.4 plus 90 times 0.6 um, minus 67.5 times 4.8. 4.8 is equal to negative 54, negative 54 foot pounds, okay? So what does that mean? The positive sign convention assumed this moment to be positive. We got a negative. You know what? That moment should really be clockwise. So I just leave it just like that. So there's my M, N, V at point F, 
okay? So what do we have to do to solve that problem? We did a chapter five problem to find the reaction forces. We did a chapter six frame problem and took it apart to find what's going on at these uh, at the reactions over here. And then we did a chapter seven problem where we sectioned the beam and we looked at the internal forces. So to solve this one problem, we had to do three problems from another chapters. So, you know, there's a lot to this. This is a little bit tricky, but I hope this kind of clears it up for you, okay? So, I hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.